So now let's pretend that we have a piece of material here that is indicated by the corner to this yellow line and following that other yellow line indicating where like a drop would be or your stock material. And we wanna use the Mach 1 to lay out the path of that stock material to make the most use of that material when we're designing and placing the parts down. So for that, let's go into place and we're gonna go to add stock and select stock path. So this is going to work a whole lot like path does in the point to point design mode, where essentially we're going to indicate where our stock currently is using touch points based off that Mach 1 arm. So first thing I'll do is I'll start at a corner and I'll say add start. And then I'm going to move my marker to the end line right there. And we'll say that's an end line. And then I will add another end line at the corner. And we'll do another end line right here at the corner. And then I'm going to click next and end path and close. So that's just like closing up your close shapes and your point to point design. So as you can see here, now I've laid out exactly where my material is. And I can use those points that I've just laid out to help with the origin and align path. So let's say now I want to go back to my design here and I want to add a bunch of gussets into my design. So let's say I just want to add the simple triangle gusset. We'll say the width is fine, height's fine. We'll do the outside cut. And I want to place down a whole bunch of them. Let's say I want to do like a pattern where there's a bunch in the X count. We'll give it a seven inch spacing. So that's kind of what my path or my design will look like. Lower those gussets by a little bit. And when I go into place, again, what I'm going to be using is that origin point to indicate where that design is going to be put down on my stock path. So we'll go to place, I'm going to say origin, and this time, instead of saying origin at a point, I'm going to say origin at stock corner. So what that's going to do is it's going to pop up all the different corners and the middle points of my stock path and give those as selection points for my design. So in this case, you would probably want to use this point here. And so that is now dedicated as my origin. and I probably want to align it. I'll say align cut to stock this time. And I'll select this line here. I'll rotate it 90 degrees. And you'll see now it's actually out of my stock material because of the way my design was created. So I'll go back to my design. I'll lower these gussets down. I'll go back to place. And now you can see all of my gussets are lined up there. I can even say maybe I want to make in my pattern, I'll edit pattern. Maybe I want to make more in my Y count. And I want to say the Y spacing is negative six. So I go back to place. What's helpful about that is I can now see where my stock material is and how much space I have so I can place my you know, designs down more efficiently. Uh, we can do the same thing and just change the alignment so that we're selecting Let's say we want to do a line cut to stock and we want to align it on this edge now. Well, it's going to square it off to that align path, but now I would want to change my origin to this point down here. And I would probably want to rotate my line so that it's on the flip side. So again, I would have to go here. I'll edit my pattern because I'll run out of space. Move it up. Now it's going to cut those gussets out this way, and I haven't had to move my torch or you know, figure out more different place points just to accomplish that goal. So uh, real quick, I'll go ahead and show you how I can cut out those gussets. So we'll just move the arm. I'll click Run. We'll say Start. And you'll see that my torch is going to go over to that first start point. 
which is actually going to be pretty close to my stock path. So like, let's say I wanted to change the position of these gussets so that they're a little bit closer to that stock path. It'll actually lead in directly from the stock itself. So I go to run and click start. Now all my lead-ins are going to actually happen on the edge of my material, which is another big benefit to using stock so that you can lay out and have edge cuts. All right, so now I've got a piece of channel here, and I'm going to show you how you can take advantage of place to locate bolt hole patterns, slot patterns, pretty much anything on a known piece of material. Um, so we're just going to clear out our current design. I'll go to place and reset my current place. And pretty much starting from scratch, let's say we wanted to do a slot pattern on this you know, channel here. And let's give it some dimension. So we'll say we'll make the diameter you know, 1 and an eighth. Make the center center length just half an inch. And maybe we'll pattern that so that we have, let's say, 4 in the Y count and then 2 in the X count. And we'll give it some spacing. That makes sense. 3 inches. And yeah, two inches probably makes sense there. So now that we have this, if you can kind of think in your head of where that origin would need to go to put this slot pattern on my channel here, I would have to tell the machine, where does my center of my first slot go? And that doesn't make a lot of sense. So what I would really want to do is probably tell it what the middle point is of this channel. And then I would tell it of offset. So I can say, you know, my slot starts, you know, on the middle point, two inches in, something like that. So I know that my slot pattern currently, uh, essentially I'm gonna locate it so that the slots are going this way along my channel. And what I'll do is I'll line this up so that I'm essentially creating my pattern so that it's on the middle of the origin and to the right. So I'll edit that shape so that the Y position where the X position is two inches. So it's gonna be the center X position is two inches over. And then my center Y position being at negative three makes sense because it's a six inch pattern. So essentially I've got six inches from the center of my bottom slots to my top slots. All this to say, if I wanted to put my slot pattern on this channel in this direction, I would just need to tell it the origin is the middle point and then the alignment is aligned to the flange or to the face of my channel. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tell the machine where my channel is. And what I'm gonna do is select essentially the inside edge of each of these little flanges on the channel. So I'm going to essentially select add stock and create my stock path. I'll go to add start and I'll put it on the edge of my flange and say that's one start point and then I'll put the end line on the other inside of my flange. I'll click next. This time we're going to end the path without closing and I'm going to go to align. Align the cut to the stock. I'll select my stock line and now you'll see my origin is still free, so I could try to place my origin down on the center line, and that might be good enough. Uh, or I can say origin at stock corner, and then select the middle point of that stock path. So now everything's going to be centered up exactly on the origin on that middle of the channel. So we'll go ahead and run this cut real quick. And the common theme that you'll see here is that it does not matter where your machine is. You can place it in any orientation 
anywhere as long as you've got your origin and your alignment down. All right, so that is essentially showing how you can lay out slots uh, perfectly centered up on this channel. The same concept applies for beams, copes, uh, angle, pretty much anything where you've got a pretty weird piece of material. And you know something some of our customers have done is they'll make their placement, uh, they'll do their design, and if they've got a bunch of different pieces of channel or angle, they'll just set up a jig where this program will run the same every time, and you could slide out that channel, slide a new one in, and this thing's gonna run the same either way. So um, just something to keep in mind, and also, of course, be aware of your diameter of your torch. You're not gonna be able to cut literally all the way up to that flange, depending on your torch diameter. So you'll wanna make sure that you have enough room and you can check in your design to make sure that you're within bounds of the machine. All right, so the last thing we wanna show you with place is Let's say I want to clear this design. I've got a pipe blind here, and let's say I want to turn it into a pipe flange and just have a center diameter put on it. And it's pretty difficult to kind of eyeball or guess the center point of this circle just by kind of marking it out. So instead, what we're going to do is use the origin that will let you select three different points on the circle to indicate what your new origin is. So with that, let's say I want to make a circle and we'll do it a six inch diameter. And when I go to place, I'll reset my current place. And as I was saying, it'd be kind of hard to eyeball this and get it to be straight with just an origin at a point. So instead, we'll say origin at center of circle. And what this will let me do is drop this torch down and I'm just gonna pick three different points along the outside of the shape. So that's one point. That's the second point. And it really doesn't matter too much which three points, as long as they're three different points along the outer circle. So as you can see now, it has all green check marks, which means I'm good to go. So I'm just gonna double check and verify. That looks about right. And we'll go to materials and run and go ahead and just click start. So now Sam's got a, a tape measure here, so we'll make sure this is relatively good. Cool, so this is pretty much useful for if you wanted to make a bore a little bit bigger, um, you could just select the same, instead of just selecting the, in, the outside points, you would select the inside points. It's kind of six to one, as long as they're all in the same diameter that you're selecting, it'll center the origin up. And eventually we'll add this to the point to point screen as well, so that you can actually drop a circle down. Instead of having to use the center point, you'll just be able to tap three different points along your hole, and then that will create the center diameter for your point to point circles. So. And so with that, that's pretty much everything there is to know about the current state of place. And now we're gonna move on to the next section.